Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing Kinder Morgan stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Kinder Morgan was founded in 1997 and headquartered in Houston, Texas. It is one of the largest energy infrastructure companies in North America. The company specializes in owning and controlling oil and gas pipelines and terminals. The company owns and operates 85,000 miles or 137,000 kilometers of pipelines. The company's pipelines transport natural gas, refined petroleum products, crude oil, carbon dioxide, and much more. This company moves about 38% of the natural gas consumed in the U.S. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, $33 billion market cap. They're trading at $14.60 a share, and they have 2.3 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future, and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has positive and growing free cash flow each year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. It's close to zero in 2017, then jumps up to 2.2 billion in 2019, but it's close to zero again in the trailing 12 months. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that's $13.7 billion in 2017. It peaked at $14.1 billion in 2018, but then it's been dropping a lot ever since. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is cost of revenue. Then the difference is the gross profit. That's between $7 and $7.5 billion every year. So even though they had low revenue in the trailing 12 months, they managed their expenses well and still had a decent gross profit. Then there's operating expenses, and below that is operating income. That's how much income the company generates from its operational core business. And this company has a decent amount of debt, so they have a pretty big interest payment on their debt, $1.7 billion. Then there's other income and expenses. Some companies make money or lose money outside of their core operations. For example, if they sold a building or a piece of machinery at a loss, that has to get passed through onto the income statement below operating income in other income and expenses. Then there's pre-tax income. The company had a really small net profit in the trailing 12 months, 110 million. In 2019, it was 2.2 billion. I would focus on operating income, and that's fairly steady. Below that, it could be real volatile, because as you can see, other income in the trailing 12 months was negative one billion, and in 2019, it was positive one billion. That's a $2 billion swing. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business, and that's around $5 billion every year. Midstream companies tend to have high CapEx. So they have about two to three billion dollars a year in capital expenditures. And the way you calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus CapEx. And that was the highest in the trailing 12 months at three billion dollars. The company is doing a good job at shedding its debt. It issued nine billion dollars of debt in 2017, but paid 11 billion dollars. So it reduced its debt load two billion dollars. 2018 was a wash. 2019, it decreased its debt load about $3 billion. A good use of free cash flow is to pay down debt. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow. And this company generates lots of operating cash flow. Remember their net income was really low in the trailing 12 months. But net income is not cash, it's accounting profit and loss. To figure out their cash flow, you take net income, then you have to add or subtract the non-cash items that were passed through onto the income statement. They passed through a $1 billion gain onto the income statement, so we have to subtract that out from cash flow from operations. They passed through a $2.3 billion depreciation expense, but we have to add that back on a cash flow from operations section. There are a few other non-cash items. If you want to get all the information, you should go to the company's 10K. Yahoo Finance sometimes doesn't pick up all the details. But the high level information is correct. 
They did generate $4.9 billion of operating cash flow, but it seems like Yahoo Finance is not picking up all the details when they map from the company's 10K to their database. Let's look at a capital structure. $34 billion of equity, $34 billion of debt. So they're 50% equity, 50% debt. And their WAC is 6.5%. That's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 92 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $82 billion. We divide that by 2.3 billion shares. We get a calculated stock price of $36. They're trading at $15, so they're trading at a 60% discount. It's a really strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is in the other direction. They're saying the stock is overvalued. Their valuation is $14.15. I'm basing my future free cash flow estimates based off of the company's historical data. So you can see the stock was really steady for a few years, then dropped in March like everything else. It came up, but then it came back down. It's sitting at a really low point, especially relative to its all-time high. The company pays a 7% dividend yield. To calculate dividend yield, you can just add up the last four dividend payments, sum them up, then divide by the stock price. That'll give you a little over 7%. Their payout ratio is really high because their net income is so low because of that $1 billion loss and other income and expenses. I like to look at annual dividend payment over free cash flow and that was 78%. So that means they have 22% left over to grow their business or pay down their debt. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $7,000 today. If you did not reinvest the dividends, you'd have about $8,200 today. If you invested $10,000 into this company in February 2011, you could have waited about four years and sold it for $15,000. But if you held it for much longer and sold, you would have lost money in your investment. Their beta is close to one, so the stock moves with the market. The stock has gone down 33% in the past 52 weeks, much worse than the S&P 500. The low was 942, the high was 2258. The stock is trading above its 50 day moving average and 200 day moving average. So it seems to be on an uptrend. This is a pretty liquid stock. About 16 to 18 million shares are traded each day. And of the 2.3 billion shares outstanding, about 1.9 billion are on float, which means they're available to be purchased by investors like me and you. About 63% of the shares are held by institutions, and it has a really low short percentage. Under 2% of the shares are shorted. Their biggest shareholder is their co-founder, Richard Kinder. He owns 11% of the company. Then Vanguard, 7.5%, BlackRock, State Street, then managed account advisors. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 12.2. The median is 14.9. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have a really high PE because they're really low net income. This means investors are paying $300 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 2.8, so they're a really good price to sales ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 1.0, also a really good price to book ratio. And book value per share is equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities on a balance sheet. That's $34 billion. But their tangible equity is $9.6 billion. So they have a lot of intangible assets on their balance sheet. The only way a company can obtain intangible assets is when they acquire another business. Interest coverage ratios EBIT over interest expense, they're at 2.2, so they can cover their interest payments a little over two times. ROE is net income over equity, they're at 0%. Current ratios current assets over current liabilities, they can only cover 60% of their current liabilities with their current assets. And their current assets are 1.1 billion of cash, 1.4 billion of receivables, and 400 million of inventory. It does look like the company will need to take on some more debt over the next 12 months to run their business. They did have $3 billion of free cash flow, but their working capital is negative $1.9 billion. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. Plus they have a $2.4 billion dividend payment. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on 44 midstream companies and the averages right here. 
So Kinder has a really bad price to earnings ratio. That's because of that big other loss. If we looked at 2019 PE ratio, I'm sure it would look fine. Their price to sales is a little worse than average, but they have a good price to sales ratio. Really good price to book, terrible current ratio, terrible ROA. They're doing a little better in debt than the average, and they're a really big company, 25 billion market cap, much bigger than average. And they do pay a nice dividend, but lower than the average in the industry. So to summarize, I do have them trading at a 60% discount. This is a really big midstream company, and they have really high free cash flow. I see really strong growth with this company in the future. Of course, there's a lot of competition and anything can happen. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.